to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie, otherwise known as The Vintage Academic, and I am a junior transfer student at UC Berkeley studying anthropology with a focus in archaeology. I make academic and vintage related content here on this channel, so if that sounds good to you, hit the subscribe button. Now if you've watched any of my videos before, then you would know that I often make videos that are geared towards helping you navigate the college application process, especially for transfer students, seeing as I am one. I've made videos talking about things like writing your college essays, and overview of what you need to do to transfer, and what my specific stats looked like when I got into UC Berkeley and UCLA. And today, I am bringing you more UC application help. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what you should be putting on your UC application for the parts of the application that are not for your personal insight questions or the UC's version of college essays. So. Let's get started. So there are seven sections of the UC application. The first four being pretty straightforward. So I'm going to try and get through those pretty quickly so I can get to the part that I'm sure you guys are all here for, the activities and awards section, because I think that's the one that should be talked about the most when discussing what you should put on your actual application. But let's start at the beginning. So section one is about you. Again, this is pretty straightforward. This is just the place where you put all of the specific and personal information that pertains to you, such as demographics, your household information, your parents' information, your income, etc. Like I said, this is very straightforward and all you need to do is record this information that is specific to your circumstances. The next section is campuses and majors. Here is where you will select which campuses you want your application sent to and for which major you are applying. The UC application is pretty unique because you fill out just one application and then that gets sent to all of the campuses for which you are applying and this is important to remember because it will affect how you write your personal insight questions such as avoiding specifically mentioning particular schools or particular majors if you're applying to multiple multiple campuses and with multiple majors. This is again a pretty straightforward section where you just select which campuses you want and which major for that campus, with the caveat being that some campuses offer an alternate major, which they may consider if they cannot offer you admission for your first choice major. This is also where you tell them which term you're applying for and for what level, so if you are applying this fall for next fall, you would select fall 2021, and then your undergraduate level, which would either be a freshman if you're coming from high school, or sophomore or junior if you're a transfer student like me. The next section is academic history. This is where you'll input all the classes that you've taken either in high school if you're a freshman or from community college if you're a transfer student. This includes reporting the grades that you received in these classes, so please remember to be 100% honest because what you report in this part of the application will indeed be verified when you're accepted. They will request your official transcripts both from high school and from community college if you're a transfer. The next section is test scores. So this is where you can report any standardized testing that you've taken, such as ACT, SAT, AP, IB, and international exams, so on and so forth. There are a few important things to remember for this section, the first being that if you're a transfer student, you are not required to take or report SAT or ACT scores. You can if you want to, but again, it's not required. The other thing I want everybody to know is that if you are a freshman, you also do not have to report SAT and ACT scores. This is something new that the UC system has introduced, mostly in response to the pandemic, but I do believe that they are reassessing their admissions guidelines. Again, you can if you want to, but it is not required. I do urge a little bit of caution when considering this because some programs may require additional testing or additional essays. Okay, on to the part that you guys actually care about, the activities and awards section. This is the place where you are given the opportunity to tell the UCs everything that you want them to know about you that took place outside of the classroom. There are six different categories that you can use to classify your activities and awards, and they are as follows. The first one is award or honor. These should be things that are significant in nature, things that indicate a high level of achievement. If they are school-based rather than at the state or nation level, then you should also provide a little bit of context, like saying something like third place out of 200 students. Then there is educational preparatory programs. You can report things like AVID here, or if you're a transfer student and you're participating in something like the starting point mentorship program at UC Berkeley, you can also put that here. Then there are extracurricular activities. For extracurricular activities, you should choose things that show continued participation, things that help to highlight your passion, your commitment, and possibly leadership skills. Then there is other coursework, which in my opinion is pretty self-explanatory. It's anything that falls outside of the A through G UC requirements for courses, so anything that you have taken outside of your high school work or your community college work. Then there is volunteering and community service. Again, this is similar to the extracurricular activities and should include things that demonstrate your continued participation, dedication, and commitment. And then the last category is work experience. This is another chance to demonstrate 
integrate things like your leadership skills and your time management skills. Now, when it comes to this section, I highly, highly recommend quality over quantity. The things that you put into this section of your application should be things that provide a fuller picture of who you are, the things that you like to do, and your experiences. So for example, while there are 20 spaces available for inputting activities and words, I only used eight. I went for things in my life that I identified as being significant, provided me experience, and included examples of the things that I list in those categories, which are things like consistent participation, commitment, dedication, time management skills, leadership abilities, so on and so forth. So here is a list of the things that I put on my application. I included my volunteer archaeology, uh, my volunteer and my internship experience at a museum, receiving the president's highest honors for my GPA multiple semesters in a row. I included the job that I've been working since 2013. I talked about being the president of the anthropology club, being a member of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, and lastly dancing ballet because it's something that I did for many years. Now all of these again are things that I identified as being significant to my life and things that I wanted the UCs to know about. What I do not recommend is just listing 20 things for the sake of having a quote-unquote impressive resume. For example, if you enjoy baking from time to time, that's not something I would put on my UC application under extracurricular activity. But if you bake every day and you work at a bakery selling your personal recipes and you have a blog and a YouTube channel about it, then that is something I would definitely add under your extracurricular activities. Again, these things should be personal and significant to you. They should demonstrate some kind of skill that you have or show that you're passionate and, and committed. You should choose experiences that have meaning, illustrate your interests, and or help to demonstrate the skills that you've learned such as leadership. I should also point out that you should not use this as another opportunity opportunity to write more essays. Focus more on what your position or your role was, and less on the description of the activity. I think I only used three to five sentences max to describe the things that I did. If you have any questions or need any advice on the things that you should or should not be including on this section of your UC application, feel free to go ahead and leave me a comment down below, and I will do my best to help you. <laughs> the last thing that I want to say about the activities and awards section is that if you didn't have the time or opportunity to participate in something like this, don't worry, it's okay. If you don't have extracurricular activities to put on this section, it's not the end of the world. Especially right now, with the current pandemic, <laughs> it is hard to come by opportunities that can provide you these experiences that the UCs are looking for. In addition, many of you watching are probably transfer students, and it's more often than not that transfer students are working through college, meaning that they don't have the time to do unpaid volunteer work. My recommendation to you, is to use your application to discuss that. What were you doing instead of volunteering or extracurricular activities? Was it a choice or was it a requirement? For example, if you're responsible for taking care of siblings or maybe an older family member, or perhaps you simply couldn't find anywhere to get a job or do a volunteer experience because of the pandemic, those are all valid reasons to not have something to put on your application. But please take the time to tell the application reader about this either in your UC essays or in the additional comments section. Okay, moving on to the next couple of sections. The next section is super simple. It's just an area where you can select different categories of scholarships that you are interested or may apply to you. This doesn't have any limit. You can select all that you want. Um, and this is also the area where you should indicate whether or not you should be considered for educational opportunity program, which is a program that provides extra support to first generation, underrepresented, and low income students. And then the last section of the application is the personal insight question or the UC's version of the college essays. This is where you choose four out of eight prompts to respond to and four more information on the PIQs, go ahead and check out the other videos I have made about this. I will leave a playlist in the description below. These include things like reading you the essays that got me accepted, reading you the essays that got me rejected so that you know what not to do. If you check out the playlist below, there is a whole slew of videos where I go into much more depth about the actual personal insight questions as well as my personal stats, which schools I apply to and for what majors, and just the general application process. All right, well, I think we have reached the end of this video. I know that this was a ton of information. I know that college applications can feel really overwhelming, especially right now when we don't know what the future is going to look like, but I believe in you. You can do this. If you need help on your applications, please don't forget to go look at all of the videos that I have already made about the application process because there is a ton of information in those videos that will hopefully be helpful to you, especially if you're a transfer student. And as always, feel free to reach out to me in the comment section if you just need somebody to talk to. Okay. Okay, thank you so much as always for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more UC Berkeley and vintage related content. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!